two things have struck me um, when you started the conversation you said that this is also this is geared towards achieving vision 2020 the first question that came to my mind was is this still alive it is it is you see the vision 2020 is an aspiration we have defined it it's a target we set for ourselves then we drew up a national plan a national implementation plan four years trying to say okay if we have to achieve that vision because you can you can vision you can envisioning is is very easy you know it's very easy the challenge is what actions do you take <coughs> in order to achieve it <laughs> now that that's that's what we outlined in the national implementation plan but then when the president was re-elected just before he was re-elected elected as president he actually set up a team to say look even in terms of trying to achieve the vision, let's identify some critical actions that the federal government, my administration, has to take in order to move us closer towards that vision. And that's what we call the transformation agenda. Are we still on track? I mean, it's one thing for the vision to still be alive. It's one thing for us to still be seeing the vision. But it's another thing to know from the planning that we have done and where we're supposed to be by the end of each year. Are we on track? Well, you see, that's, that's the whole essence. We, we are in, in the sense that if you take, for example, just take the big picture, which is the GDP size. Uh, when we started, we were number 42 in the world in terms of size of GDP. Now we are about number 39. So we've moved up the ladder already. We are talking of rebasing of Nigeria's GDP. Every country rebases its GDP generally every five to ten years. We haven't done. Our own GDP is based on 1990 uh, statistics. So the National Bureau of Statistics is rebasing the GDP. When Ghana rebases its GDP, its GDP shot up by about a sixty percent. And the, someone will say that the GDP is not tangible. I mean, you have said it. Well, <laughs> maybe you haven't said it in in such clear terms, mm. but you have said that you know inputs and outputs are two different things, and what actually matters to the common man is the outcome. Uh, the question will be the performance contract that was signed uh, by ministers with the president. Is it based on output or outcome? What we have done is, first of all, for every ministry, there is what is called the ministerial scorecard. In that scorecard, we have captured virtually every activity of the ministry, uh, taking every parastator that reports to it, the, all the departments, and so on. So what are the key outputs and outcomes that each ministry should achieve? So depending on the size of the ministry, education, health, which are quite big ministries, with several parastators. You could have as many as 50, 60 key performance indicators for that, those kinds of ministries. For the smaller ones, maybe 10, 15, 20. But out of those, we now said, okay, let's take four or five of the most critical performance indicators and put those in a, in a performance contract that the minister will sign with the president. So that's, that's that one. But from the ministerial KPIs, the minister also now will sign, will pick those that are relevant to the PAMSEC and sign a performance contract with the permanent secretary. He will also pick from that large number of KPIs those that are relevant to each parastatal and sign bilaterally. So really it's a system that is trying to get everybody to be accountable to his boss and ultimately to the people. Lots of questions coming through to, through um, Twitter, but perhaps we'll come to that uh, if time permits. But if you, I mean, looking at this, uh, what will be the KPI for, say, uh, Ministry of Finance? Because, you know, people talk about the economy and they say, even if the GDP is increasing and people are getting poor and the value of what they have in their pockets really doesn't count. Would you say the ministers in that circumstance have not lived up to their billing? 
Well, the kind of KPIs that um, we have developed, say, for Ministry of Finance, again, are very clear and specific. For example, uh, there are certain ratios. What is the deficit to the GDP ratio? You know? Uh, is it being achieved or not? Uh, sharing of FAC allocation, for example. Does it take place within a stipulated time or are there delays in getting this done? Paying of <coughs> salaries and this thing. Is, is there a, dead, a deadline? Are they paid by the 25th of each month? You, you understand? Think, so this, these kinds of, of uh, um, uh, the submission of the budget to the National Assembly certain deadline has to be done by a certain deadline is it done done by the getting the approval of the budget even though it's not really you can you cannot once it is delivered to the national assembly the minister would have at least done his or her bit in other words well, we're talking about measuring and evaluating uh, performance here but again if you took look look at all of that you just uh, analyzed uh, delivering they will, should also be looking at uh, rewards sometimes. So the question now being linking rewards to measurable performance. It's a very important thing, but as you know, the public sector is a very difficult animal. Certain processes and procedures are unique to the public sector. So while in the private sector it's very easy to use the carrot and the stick, you guys, I'm sure you are very well paid. By, 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 by your organization and I mean if they want tomorrow they can increase your pay if you do something very well. In the public sector it's not so easy. If the minimum wage goes up, well. Uh, exactly. There are problems with the minimum wage. <laughs> All ministers are paid the same salary. We, we, there is no difference between what one minister, you know, the president cannot say, oh you are doing very well therefore I'll pay you 20% extra. He can't do So that. what's the reward for the... The reward you see, we are trying, in terms of the public servants, <coughs> we are working with the office of the uh, um, head of service to now also cascade this whole thing into the actual individual performance of, uh, uh, of, of, of the average public servant. With the ministers, I think the reward and sanction obviously is with the president. But at least this gives the president a very objective basis for coming to some conclusion. And the ultimate reward for a minister is probably to be allowed to continue serving the public as minister. And the ultimate sanction is for the president to say, after discussion, sorry, on the basis of this, you're not really meeting up to my standard, and therefore, please, go. So th that's the ultimate. Uh, um, but but I think for me, really, that's not even, it's not those extremes. What is important is, like we said, if you are measuring, if something is working, you know it's working. If it is not working, you can go back and correct it. Sometimes it's not the fault of the minister. Sometimes it's not. For example, I, I'll give you one, one, one example. During discussion with the minister, this training of uh, youth. You, we, have, we do a lot of youth programs. And what we are saying with this system is not enough to just say we have trained 20,000 youth. The evaluation aspect is two years, three years later. You need to go and track where are those youth now.